time for a review of stories making the headlines in the papers. With me in the studio for that are two gentlemen, lawyer and public affairs analyst, Ukenna Nebedum, and another public affairs analyst, Ambrose Igboke. Gentlemen, thank you for coming thank on the you. program this morning. Let's quickly head straight to the papers. And Daily Trust here says, rerun polls hold in Kanu, Benue, Faradas, March 23rd. INEC takes decision on reverse election today. And we move to the Vanguard. Inconclusive polls, the battleground states. Uh, March 23rd date for makeup polls in Adamawa, Kanu. Others' anxiety heightens as INEC holds back on Rivers. OB expresses concern over Rivers tailmates. PDP flees BMO over President's neutrality claim. To business news, West Africa, we have worries as federal government further delays micro pension implementation. New Telegraph, we have uh, 609,197 voters decide or Tom Ganduje Tumbuel others fate. INEC fixes supplementary election for March the 23rd, justifies action. Commission silent on rivers, set up team to resolve Bochi deadlock. Buhari meets APC governors, women storm Sakoto INEC office. And to the Guardian, INEC fixes March the 23rd for extra polls in six states. Well, let's quickly look at the New Telegraph, gentlemen. And one of the stories here says a threat to, of indigenous language extinction is real. Is it real? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, UNESCO, I remember some years back, uh, United Nations, uh, uh, yeah, UNESCO came yeah. up with uh, uh, some statistics and uh, from research and they listed some languages that will be extinct in the next 50 years, which is like, should be like 45 years remaining now from that 50 years. And uh, uh, coincidentally, Igbo language was one of those listed as mm. one of the things that will possible extinct. So it happens because most of us, in, a, in a, the madness of copying uh, Western lifestyle Western and cultures yeah. and values, have decided to you know, even uh, drop our local culture, uh, which is culture. The continuous transmission of culture is through language. And if you don't have that, then your language will disappear. And even people who bear uh, native names, I'm now saying that, okay, They're somebody, somebody is uh, Ngozi, you ask her, what's your name? He said, my name is Blessing. I said, what, well, your, your name or your register reads Ngozi, so why? Ngozi, it mistranslated as Blessing. You don't need to give me the translation of your name. You give me your name. Is, is it that we are ask not you, the proud meaning? of our indigenous language? Uh, it's because uh, we see everything home front local as inferior. Mm. I think the inferiority complex of the average African, and especially in Nigeria, in a mad rush to emulate Western standard, have been the main uh, uh, you know, obstacle to the continuous sustenance of our language, cultures, and value system. Okay, now do you share the same uh, view on this matter? Of the feeling that uh, of inferiority when it comes to our culture and our values as uh, with regards to you know, this extinction, and when we put it side by side, westernization, is that the reason why? Westernization and science and technology. I think more of science and technology deals a heavy blow on indigenous languages because uh, if your numbers cannot be reduced, like I was confronted with a, a Russian sometime in 2016, they said, can your language be reduced to a keyboard? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> if, you don't, if you can't translate your language into a keyboard and then wait, it's a matter of time it will go into extinction. I think science itself, discoveries itself, is a part of the reasons uh, beyond. But we need these things uh, for our daily life. Uh, but how can we translate sciences and discoveries? It's, 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 it can be language? done. It but should be. It, it can be it done. It can be done. Mm -hmm. But it needs to evolve, not just happening overnight. You understand? But I also think that uh, for us to get it done, there should be huge investments. When last was uh, investments made in education, let alone directed to indigenous languages and There cultures. was a time where, you know, these languages, especially Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo were taught in schools. We were taught, we, we were taught the language yes. in our own set. So but you can see, presently, most of the radio stations right now, how many of them do languages or programs that go on indigenous languages. With the advent of the BBC in the country, except for them and few other, just few stations, 
only the BBC uh, uh, conducts some programs in indigenous languages, and they are very scarce. Most schools are getting, you know, uh, scarcity of uh, people who uh, even enroll through JAM to study those courses, let alone uh, graduate. And but the jobs are very, very uh, competitive out there. You wouldn't look for a job in getting to work to develop uh, an indigenous language or mm. to practice it or to even teach it or to even use it in the media. But then how do we move but, on from here? We need, because it, extinction, that's quite scary. You would agree with me. Yeah, Nigeria is a heterogeneous entity where we have diverse languages and the rest. So if the federal government cannot do it, I don't think we should wait for them. We the can't wait for the federal the, government yes, to the do various, all of these things. Yes, uh, the compartment, the various languages. Families. The, even the language the, the, should make some concerted. Uh, Yorubas are, try, are trying in that regard, but recently they've lost that steam. Where even when you go to some place, you speak the language, you know. Uh, even at, in the village, you say a village meeting of a particular extraction, you are speaking English language there. So these are the things where you start from. Start from that when you even have your town union meeting, you speak your language. When you are having your various uh, subsect meetings, you speak your language. Then those tech gigs from the different languages, for example, you can start writing algorithms. You can start writing your coding language in your, your, your own language. And then we can put Yoruba, Igbo, and every other thing. Your Russian friend <laughs> got it wrong. We can put all these things inside the mix because there are Chinese keyboards. There are Russian keyboards. There are, so Which are more technical than our language. One of the indigenous uh, companies now, uh, before, on the, on the yeah. listing, actually had Nigerian Naira and some other Nigerian signs on the keyboard. The keyboard. So it can be done. Is migration, when we look at you know, one of the factors, what do we say uh, migration also can contributed to, to this? And my, can my we check that aspect? Yes, migration and globalization. They uh, make the world, they, uh, we flow in that trend, but that doesn't really need to get us forget our local or our indigenous languages. It's just a matter of choice. Some parents feel that this is a trend. Most parents teach their uh, young uh, uh, babies and uh, their, their words foreign languages, especially English language, even before they got to learn their indigenous language. Some don't speak it at home with their, their words, children. With their children, and you, you see, it's a very dangerous trend that uh, will, will, is carrying us on the face. But except something drastic is done. What would be a drastic decision? A investment, drastic step? investment, investment on investment the part of on the family part of or government, the government, and seriousness on the part of families to get their words, learn their language. And like, I, I start with myself. My children understand Igbo even though only one can speak. <laughs> so you are guilty. <laughs> I am not guilty. I just, I, I, I just say I, I live by example. You've not told me what happens in your own too, whether they even understand at all. All right, let's quickly head straight to The Guardian now. And one story here, gentlemen, is the Senate begins consideration of a 9 trillion Naira 2019 budget uh, today. Is this good news? So they have finished the election, they cannot come <laughs> They've back reconvened. To, uh, they, yeah. So now they want to they focus want to on serious, job. serious I, matters. I just think that we are the first quarter is almost ending in two weeks' time, the first quarter of the year. We have not done budget. I think uh, we are not doing well as a nation where we have not passed our budgets, you know, uh, in, good time. in good time. Sometimes you're wrong. Even though provisions are made in the Constitution where you can still run the previous budget, the one-year cycle, you know. Yes. Et, et, but again, we should, you know, our fiscal year is supposed to be December 31st ending so we should try to maintain that in that uh, we're expecting that every first january in our new year message the president should come around will be part of the new year message to be budget so that we can have it or if you want to change the cycle to october first let's know but this thing that you you, you are supposed to you are always behind schedule in budget presentation these are supposed things that are supposed to be done October last year and November last year so that we can get our acts together and get the economy and we can run. plan so having said that let them speed up the action so that by latest before uh, April, let them pass this so that Nigerian, because many businesses are actually waiting uh, yes. for the budget to be, to, to be, uh, to be passed. To be so passed before, before they, they can take make some key yes. business decisions. Yes. So many FDIs are also waiting, foreign direct investments are also folding their arms, waiting for the government to, because COMEC must take the lead in economic policy before the private sector and other people uh, key in. Mm. That is very vital. They should speed up the process. Speed up the process, okay, Nani Bedum. How soon do you expect them to? Move? We're already running behind schedule. I've always been against the country 
our country, Nigeria, shutting down the country because of politics. And it is telling on us. We have so huge punitive price to pay for it. Mm. All foreign direct investors are waiting to see the direction of public policy, to see the direction of the budget. But what do we get? This is the first quarter of 2018 ending and then we are not even too sure they are settling down because some of them still have one or two skirmishes to do with uh, suspended uh, mm. inconclusive elections and all those but since they've started it's a good thing let them start well and then let them expedite actions taking decisions on the budget and so that it can be passed in less than 30 days time in less than 30 days do you think that will happen they just have to. They don't have anything uh, debarring them from getting that done. The budget has already been uh, moved to the committee stage, and all the committees are looking at it. And uh, the ministries, departments, and agencies were defending the budget even before the election yeah. started. So it's just a matter of more pop uh, views and then uh, dot the T's, uh, cross, cross the, the T's, and uh, dot the I's, and then uh, get us a budget temp template, and we'll take it off from there. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your thoughts on the newspaper review this morning. Well, you're watching TVC Breakfast, and we're streaming live on YouTube. You can connect with us on Twitter using the hashtag TVC Breakfast. Still to come on the show.